Hello and welcome back to my uh, second development blog uh, uh, for learning Unreal and hopefully eventually making a game out of this. Right, so last week I had a working double jump which works like this. You could uh, change your direction in midair and a uh, basic wall run that had a few bugs with it that had now been solved and it has been massively improved also to how the wall run works. On top of this, other features that I've added include a um, a slide jump, uh, well, a full crouching system, and a slide. The slide works as long as you've got momentum, crouch if you have no momentum. Okay, uh, as you can see there as well, I also got it. I'll discuss that later. Right, so... Um, let's go over the changes also to some of the other stuff that I made. So, the uh, first is the double jump. At first, if you were to double jump, you would always dash forward no matter what in the direction that you were looking. Now, I made it if you have no uh, velocity, uh, no intended velocity, should I say, so you're not holding W, A, S, or D, you'll just double jump straight in there. But if you are moving in a direction, you will always get that boost jump. So if you have any velocity, you will always get the boost jump, which means that um, if you forget to hold W for whatever reason, you will so be able to change the direction of your jump. So otherwise, you just continue, you jump again, you keep your momentum in the same direction. And uh, to be honest, it just ended up winding me up, so I thought I'd change it. Uh, other things that I've changed uh, with the test level is, of course, a little just slide area there, just to make sure that was working and how low I wanted the crouch to go, which was... Uh, past this middle one, but not that one. Okay, and the warden section of the course, which I will show here. Okay, now I'll just quickly go over some of the other things. Uh, the slide. The slide itself uh, is nothing fancy. As long as you're moving forward and hit control, you will slide. Or whatever input key is bound to control, uh, bound to slide, should I say. Upon doing this, uh, you'll increase your movement speed uh, by, I think it's 50 or 100, I can't remember, I'll have a look in a second, for three seconds, uh, and then it'll drop down after with that. So you get a small movement speed boost on top of that. As well as that, you also get the slide jump. So this gap would normally require you to jump twice to make it across, but with the slide, you can make it in one. So the slide jump, similar to like uh, think Crash Bandicoot, if you were to slide and jump, you'd make a fair, you'd make a gap that was further away, that sort of thing. Okay, so uh, let's go into the blueprint and um, I'll say, did I completely forget to talk about the bugs I had with the wall run? Nah, hold on, I've got a list of things to talk about here. So um, things that have changed, I've fixed uh, the wall run will end if the player walks away from the wall. You are now completely locked into the wall, I'll show you how this is done. Just open this up. So this is done by setting your air control to zero um, while you are on a wall. You cannot, while you're on a wall, you cannot move at all. You cannot move away from it at all. I was gonna restrict the WASD keys um, and I did do that and then I just decided, let's try the air control instead. Both work perfectly fine. Uh, I've not had any repercussions as of yet for using it and if I do I can just swap it back to just restricting any form of movement um, on in my movement input I can set something up here which will just uh, uh, yeah, move input is ignored that's right I can just pop that in instead uh, the next one was the wall room needs a time I decided against this surprisingly enough when um, building the extra like a uh, level to test the wall run out properly um, I've kind of liked having the infinite time. It's kind of grown on me over time. It means uh, you could probably do some impressive set pieces as I start with level design, having the wall run take you for miles if you want, for instance. Um, but end of the day, the time limit, in fact, uh, I could just make it so that if you're on a wall, there'll be something that'll come up ahead. And obviously, you yeah, have to move out of the way of it or be killed, destroyed, whatever I'm going to have in the future. So that way, 
even though there isn't a timer, I can set one that the player won't be at fault at for starting too early or starting too late uh, on their wall run. Uh, Distance-wise, they won't be punished for that. Instead, they'll be punished for not reacting to the obstacle ahead. Kind of like that. Okay, what have we got next? If the player runs, if the player wall runs with no momentum, the player will still be wall running. Right, the way I changed this, um, it just naturally happens. I don't know why, but it, I just slightly adjusted the capsule and the view movement. This was because um, originally I had, if I bring the spring arm, pop it in the center. Uh, I found that if I went up to a wall and looked down, you clip through the wall. <laughs> so what I did is I just moved the camera back a little bit, moved the spring arm back a little bit. And then I don't know why that's fixed everything. Completely fixed everything. Not a problem anymore. Uh, uh, to do with that. Uh, but the I wanted to lock the speed during the wall run. And I originally said it was to do with the player direction and the force. Now, originally, player direction uh, was set here. As soon as the wall run started. I think somewhere around here or here. Um, or maybe even here. So what would happen is it would begin, it would set the direction you were looking here. So that would be your play direction. And then what it would do is it would add force on top of that. And it did not work, did not work at all. No matter how much I put like a hundred billion into the times box, it would not add any force at all to the character. I don't understand quite how the force works, to be honest. Not a big Star Wars fan. So what I've changed this to now is a set player direction a function um, and if we go into here it's a bloody mess so in here what we have is as soon as that set player direction goes off it will check two things and it will set two line traces going and these line traces come out of the left side of you and the right side of you now what these do is they go into a break hit result and they take the normal um, of whatever you've hit so uh, for instance this would be the wall that you are running on I don't need an actor has tag because the player will not be wall running if the actor doesn't have the tag so this will never activate unless the tags already there so it will take the normal and then it will rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis making it parallel to the wall and then that will be your player direction that's the direction I want the player to travel along the wall so this will only happen if uh, the left side returns a value and this will only happen if the uh, right side returns a value otherwise nothing will happen they'll just both both line traces will go out nothing will happen um this however actually we'll try this in a bit and we'll do a little experiment you'll get to see it uh, because one of the problems that i'm having is that um when if you actually know, I think I've fixed that now. I don't think that's a problem anymore. No, I, I've already fixed that. Never mind. Okay. Uh, that was a problem where if you hit a wall and then rotated around very quickly, you would um, immediately dash in the other direction. And that was entirely because of this. What would be happening is both these line traces would be happening. And if you turned round quick enough in a certain way that um, the old capsule uh, it used to just not have the front there because I was setting it up for the wall uh, wall climbing. Uh, if it moved back a little bit, so it pretty much it was indented like that. Uh, when the span round, the uh, overlap went off and back on again, allowing starting a new wall run as soon as you turned round. Managed to fix that just by putting it like this. It doesn't affect the wall run either. Uh, well, the wall climb for the future, I hope. But that'll be uh, a different story when I get that up and running. Uh, okay, so that's how that's done. It then takes 800 units and XY override and the Z override. The Z override is not really needed, but for I put it in, um, there was a reason. I'm pretty sure there was a reason. Either way, but ZZ will be zero and because of this. So 800 times zero is zero, so it doesn't really make a difference, but it does if I have it unchecked. Can't remember why, but I'm not checking it because I don't want to break it. Uh, what else have we got here? So that's the wall running. That's uh, most of what's changed. Also what's changed is this. Once on wall has been set, it then comes into wall run camera rotate. 
and uh, what happens here is it gets your location it gets um, the left wall run and it checks if there is a hit on this uh, this is basically have you uh, are you running along a wall that's on your left side or on the right side this is all this is doing here so once that's done um, it comes up to here and it'll know if you're on the left side or the right side if there's a wall on your left side or the right side and then it will play a left wall rotate or a right wall rotate I should change the name of that quickly even though it's obvious what it is right wall rotate <clears throat> and quite simply what this does um, is it sets your control rot control rotation uh, based on your player controller which is obviously you and um, all this does is it gets the camera the world rotation uh, breaks the rotator up into its individual components doesn't have the X puts the X to 10 the X would be zero anyway um, because there's never any roll um, when looking around or anything like that so it's at the X to 10 and then load the rotator from the original to be a course uh, across the time of 0.15 seconds simple as that and then it's just um, repeated down here as well that's all it is um, and then obviously when the end overlap ends there is a separate reset here I could have had this to reverse um, on this like it wouldn't have um, well, I could have just had it reverse but um, it, that's where the snapping problem came from um, so you'd start a wall run uh, I originally watched a tutorial, a tutorial from the Let's Create series where he did this and he only had one of these uh, or two of these shall I say and um, it would um, I think he had two of these yeah he would have had two of these wouldn't he but either way it would have it reverse and uh, it just ended up with some snapping issues so instead of like smoothly going from A to B it just snapped back to A to B I don't know why but having it split up into two separate things just smooths it out completely because it will always go back to zero and then this down here is the wall running camera modifier so what this would do is if you think mirror's edge when you hit a wall run it will lock your camera um, parallel to the wall and I wanted that and it doesn't work and I can't figure out why it doesn't work and um, oh, it's causing all sorts of issues um, so I abandoned this for the time being because currently I like the way it is um, especially since this is more oriented to PC gamers um, rather than console there isn't the need for the lock because you can just quickly swing your mouse around it's not a problem uh, I will get this sorted in the future most likely though um, so what it would do is it just do a do once it would take your location and it would get the left wall and obviously this is check if you're on a left wall or a right wall and um, yeah it's basically the same as this except what it was doing is it was um, setting your wall direction which is this code here where it would do the line trace I could probably actually like make this a lot better but it would take your left wall run do a line trace take the impact normal uh, as a vector then turn it into a rotation which would be printed on a string just for me to debug it would then break the rotator um, and add 90 to the Z so this would obviously make it parallel and uh, then set the variable of wall direction left and then it would come in here and set, uh, reset, set up your control rotation obviously the problem is, is it completely clashes with this uh, maybe to be honest actually now I think about it I could just link it because the Z isn't changed here so I could just get the wall direction left and have it um, whatever the value is affect this here for the rotator I don't know I'll have to experiment it over uh, this week if I want to okay so next is the crouching and sliding now this was a ball -like, um so much because uh, I, I was having non-stop problems with this um, so currently what it's set up as um, is if you press crouch it will come over here and it'll do one or two things the first is it goes to a branch but we'll go to the second it will come over here all the way over here and it will start your crouch animation where it will change the capsule height uh, from 88 to 44 uh, basically halving not, not quite half in but half in your height 
either way. Um, that's what this is here. This is all this is doing is it's taking the capsule height and half in that. It is also taking your camera location, which is set as soon as you begin playing. It just gets your target uh, camera relative location and sets it. And it just gets your camera location and uh, drops it down. I think I think I was trying to add a rotator onto the camera. Hmm, that didn't work. Don't think I need that there. It's only the Z I needed. Can't remember. Wait, that's a vector. Maybe I did need it. I honestly can't remember. This is bad. I really should make more of these updates. So either way, it comes here and it goes to the zero. It goes to the true, uh, well the branch, and it will check if your velocity is zero. And if it is, what it does is it sets your regular crouch. So it will set you to max moment speed to 300 and set you as crouching. Uh, the boolean is crouching to true. It will then, if, if it was false, so you were moving at any at all. I originally wanted this as, um, you know, just a positive vector. Um, so uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, if it turns out like your vector can be in the negatives. Or your velocity can be in the negatives for some reason, even though you walking forwards but you're walking backwards in world space so your velocity is negative i don't understand it but it, that's how it works but either way it comes here if it is false to start the slide it sets your um, ground friction to zero and your braking deacceleration de while walking to zero straight away so you'll instantly start sliding it then checks if you are already sliding now i don't think i need this check anymore because the way I've got this set up, but this here is actually to solve a problem that I changed here. So what would happen is this would originally not have the XY override on. So you can see here that it adds, it sets your movement speed to basically 800 units forward as soon as you start a slide. But if I turn this off, it adds 800 units. So if I were to slide, jump, slide, the speed would infinitely increase constantly and didn't want that so I just set the XY override. I originally had it that I did want it, I wanted a form of bunny hopping um, or like I wanted it so that if you were barely moving at all you wouldn't get much of a slide going and um, but if you were moving at full speed you would get 800 units because it would plus 200 for instance and then it wouldn't have the XY override. Uh, this, what this would do is if you had, if it was the first slide it would let you slide uh, normally it would launch you 200 units forward but if you were already sliding I think this is where it went wrong is because is sliding is uh, stopped here the moment everything resets and oh god it caused all sorts of problems so just having it set to it basically what all you could do is you could constantly bunny hop and build infinite speed up by sliding and jumping this actually didn't fix it so I could actually just delete this because it does nothing. It's a shame because it's nice and neat. Okay, so anyway, once it launches your character 800 units forward, it adds a five second delay. And this is so rudimentary. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. There's got to be another way to fix it. And if anybody watching this video knows of a different way to fix it. So this was driving me mad for, I think, two days. And I could not work out how to do it. So basically what I wanted is as soon as the player jumps, the crouch ends, the slide ends. You keep your momentum at the slide ends and uh, you would then have to press control again before landing to start the slide and it just caused so many problems so what this is doing here is it starts a delay for 0.5 seconds as soon as the slide starts it will then check if you are falling so have you jumped right if it is true it comes along here and it starts to slide to slow down so immediately like you will like, you'll get the ground friction and braking deacceleration back if not, it adds it for another 0.3, and if not, another 0.1. This is the only way I could work out to do it. It was driving me absolutely mad. I don't even know why there's another 0.1 here. I just wanted a 0.9 seconds of sliding, <laughs> I guess. It checks it twice, and I really wish there was another way, because this adds other problems. So if you jump immediately after sliding, 0.4 seconds later, you'll see the camera jump up. So if I come in here, slide jump. Do you see it? This is a little like hop jumps. If I come here, slide jump, 
you can't really notice it, it's actually not that bad. Mm. Maybe maybe I'm just worrying too much here, but either way it works, but it's not pretty at all. Uh, so next comes the slide slowdown, and all this is is a loop of the ground friction. Because it's already set to zero, it's always going to be set to zero. I don't have to mess about with anything else. And it just slowly puts it back up to its default values, and um, it will then it'll set both of these, and then we'll come to here. It'll set your max walk speed to 725 units from 600, so you get 125 uh, movement speed boost for three seconds, I believe. Yeah, so it's set to 725, and delay for three seconds, set it to 600. Okay, so what it'll do is it'll, um, it'll add the delay and whatnot, and then um, the next headache I had uh, was this. Now, obviously, if you are sliding, I want the player to be able to still hold control and go into a crouch, a crouch walk. And um, I was losing my mind on how to how to do this sort of thing. So, but eventually, it just ended up being really simple. I was doing a really daft thing where I would take the input crouch, and I thought that this would fit in here. Now it probably does actually. I could probably put that in there and it would work. I'm not sure. I actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't for some reason. Because I thought that key, if you press the key for input crouch, it would work, but it just doesn't. I have to actually put it to left control. But either way, it will check if it's greater than zero. So have you pressed it? Is it still down? And if it is, um, then it will set your max to 300 and you'll do a regular crouch. If not, it says you're not crouching, you're not sliding. And um, it will, you're not sliding anymore, and reverses the animation for the original crouch. Bloody hell, that was a ball ache to go on through. Um, what else have we got? Okay, so yeah, and then once you release it, if you're crouching, once you release it, it'll just check if you're crouching because there is everything's automated with the slide. It will automatically stand you back up once the slide's finished. But if you release the crouch key while um, crouching obviously you want to be able to stand back up instantly so just doing a regular crouch and all that does is check if you're crouching as the branch comes over here it'll set your movement speed to 600 because we do not want the um uh, well i haven't got anything else to set it to 600 and we do not want the 725 speed boost you get from sliding so it comes up to here and it just immediately goes here hey it sets you to no longer crouching no longer sliding and smooth crouch that is that Okay, so what else uh, problems did I have? The sliding triple jump and uh, the double jump issue as well. Okay, so this is a fun one. Um, so there were two problems I had and the first one actually uh, was the, uh, the capsule half height would um, is classed as falling when changing it so the 88 to 44 you are technically falling during that duration which of course one of the problems i had in the last video that i mentioned was that if the player um this right here was falling um you could no longer jump now that minus 100 is a very small amount so that capsule change would um, stop you from double jumping so I had to do a massive workaround and another branch to check are you sliding and if you are sliding what this does is it just completely ignores this velocity check here and it will um, check this set your jump count to one uh, and then um, what is it now it checks if you are on a wall this was because of, oh, what was it now? If you were sliding and you went on a wall, um, that's right, you would get a uh, slide jump rather than a wall jump. So what this does is it checks if you're sliding to avoid the velocity, but if you slide and then uh, slide into a wall, because while you are in air, you can start a slide, um, it will check if you're on a wall and um, then if you are, it'll just it'll let you do a regular wall jump. If not, it will follow along here and let you do a slide jump. We do not need this here, I don't believe. 
No, we do not. I'll let you do a slide jump. So the camera forward vector, uh, all this is doing is it's getting the camera's forward vector. I have a times here uh, for if I want to boost the speed of the player. Let's say I have this set up ready. So if I want you to do a slide jump and you get a bonus bonus speed. So if I were to set this to, I don't know, 600 fun play slide and jump in, I get launched really far forward. So originally, yeah, it's really easy to make that jump now. It's not quite as close. Can just do a slide and jump. I might actually play back with that, but that'll be when more so. It's there for when I need it, but for right now, I just want it one time. So you just keep your regular momentum. And then it also launches your character up 500 units, which is just enough to make it across that gap, which is what I deem feasible for a slide jump, especially since you get your double jump on top of that. All right, I think that is everything. Um, there was the sliding triple jump. And I can't remember. Oh, yeah, that's because quite simply, I completely forgot to add this jump count in here. So I was uh, banging my head against the wall, like, why on earth is my jump count? Um, like, why, why am I able to triple jump? And it just turns out that I just had a set of jump count here. So what would be happening is this happen, you do your regular jump, you press space again, it comes along here and sets your jump count to one and then lets you do a double jump after that and setting jump count to two for all the other checks that are going on. This everything jump is going to get massive when I come to the wall climb. I can already feel it. Um, but yeah, I think that is everything I've currently got. There's nothing else really new. That's setting your camera location for the um, the crouch animation. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Okay, so problems that I know that I've got at the moment. I just recently fixed one, which was the uh, if you start a wall run and then turn turn round quick enough, you would uh, change your direction. You won't. The problem. Hmm. But the problem I've got is if I jump, um, I don't know how to put this. If if I jump into the wall and then jump while still on the wall, I lose my jumps. So uh, you you'll see here if I jump onto this wall and double jump, I can now no longer, longer jump off. This also allows me to do stuff like this. So I jump on the wall, change my direction, which is not that big of a deal really. Usually there's not going to be a need to in the game, but obviously it's there, it's abused, it might be abused, but I don't know, people find out that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, you can wall run, it's the next wall run, but the thing is, if I jump here, I only get my double jump, that was a double jump there, so. See, so what I want to happen here is anytime you jump, you cannot wall run on this wall anymore, you cannot wall run on the same jump again, so. Is odd. I'm really not too sure how to fix this one. Um, I was trying earlier, and uh, none of my problems would work. Or if they did work, the original jump would be replaced with the slide jump. But I'm not sure why. And no, I don't think it was replaced with the slide jump. You would always just jump forwards. You wouldn't jump outwards. So if I was looking over here, I'd carry on my momentum this way. Really not sure why. Uh, um, that's what I'm going to be figuring out over this week as well as finally hopefully I'll have the wall climbing done and um, so at the last problem with the crouch which is obviously head detection so you'll stay crouched if there's something above you so I'll get a line trace going for that uh, attach that to the swing arm maybe or the half capsule height and then if there's something above you you cannot uncrouch until you're out and then it'll let you uncrouch Um, but yeah that is it thank you very much for watching guys um, hopefully this video will be under 20 minutes long if I'm lucky and I hope to see you next week where hopefully a hell of a lot more progress will be made thank you for watching